Hmm, I want to believe. Radiant Wings. A larger than life monster has been spotted on the banks of Lake Gala. We suspect this is the same life form witnessed in Nosante, having now dragged itself out of the water. Galeosaurus. Hmm. Radio Stars Reborn. There's been a disaster. We ran into a problem at Radio Trista right before we were, ab were about to record our latest show. We need replacement actress ASAP. If you can help, I'll give you the details in person. I managed to get a read on the location of the Hercules Fifth Squad to escape before. They've pulled up in a blockade area somewhere in Avon Hills. I'd like to ask for your help again to finish the job once and for all. This time I know we can bring them in. I'll meet you in a ho Hotel Hortensia in Ordis. You know, I can go anywhere. Oh, uh, Pablo, nice to see you in the workshop. <clears throat> Alright, Tita and I are taking turns. Min and Gustav are on Penzer's soul at maintenance duty. They never hold anything back either. But if Orman Operations is what you need, then you can leave it up to me. A genuine railroad technician prodigy. A genius, even. Uh, is that a roundabout way of saying you want to be in charge of Orman ma maintenance? I guess you're pretty passionate about all kinds of engineering, huh? Have a look-see! Woof woof! You're watching a store today, huh? Got anything new, uh, new in recently? At what point did I stop questioning the canine shopkeeping business exactly? Arf? Oh, I'm nothing, sorry. Thanks for everything you do for us, Cerberus. Arf. Hmm. There should be something all the way at the top. Iron hair reen? What does iron hair even look like? Oh, it looks like Osborne. Yeah! Easy now. A powerful foe. Have at you! Hmm. Okay, start with. Which high heavens would give me a lot of defense? Resident. Now, shining. There. Gotta make sure I kill or break it with either Usus or Angelica. Hmm. I got your back. Thanks. My turn. It's my turn. My turn. Light. Noble Arc. Moving out. Judgment time. This! There! An opening! <laughs> Sucker! Now! Shoot, did she get sealed or something? Strange. Oh no, I got petrified! Thanks. Leave it to me. We're all the way back up here. I'm up. I'm 
I'm up! Roar! Uh, healing strike! Now! You wide open! May want to switch Angelica sooner or later. Thanks! You have my thanks. It's my turn. Devo My turn. Hmm. Judgment time. Eat this. It's my turn. Sen Sucker. They're down! I'll assist! My turn. Switch! I got this! Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and cast Noble Arc again. Let's go! Dragon Kick. I think we're good enough for it now. Very well. There, I should get double drops for that. They're open! An opening! Let's go! Everyone okay? Ocean Bell times two. A matter of course. That's how it's done. I must train even more. I want to believe completed. One bonding point, and I lost my horse. Shorza, did you come here to train as well? I just want to see what was going on, that's all. And you said that you could lend us the Slefner this morning, right, Dubuli? Yes, I already have the settings all programmed. The Slefner F2 Type 1 Type 2. Physical attacks are not very effective against the Type 1. Base your approach around those capable of using magic. Conversely, since magic attacks are not very effective for Type 2, an approach based around physical attacks should be taken. Got it, looks like it'll make for some good training. When you want to put your skills to the test again, just let me know. So, we have to fight probably both Slefners at once, huh? Okay, I should probably rearrange my team a bit. Alright, I'll fetch you a Slefner for the drill. Hmm. Well, I, can I have to fight them separately. Okay, just use magic. What a passionate foe! <laughs> Back at you! It's my turn! Okay. Divine Song. It's my turn! Resin. Let's go! I think if I used La Porta, I could still deal some decent physical damage. Maybe. Let's go! I'm going! Hmm. Damn, I didn't predict. I, I really wish it would top out your EP even when you change your master courts. Sucker! It still deals the massive damage. We don't even need to use uh, magic. What? It's my turn. 
to vote. My turn. Chip. It's my turn. It's my turn. What the heck was that movement? It's my turn. Hmm. It's my turn. What? I'm up. Fatal Helix. Roar! <sighs> uh, helix strike! I'm going! Yeah, did not. What? We didn't even need to use magic. Shoot it. Do I get penalized for using physical? So, that's the question. Although it's expected you to be able to take down a type 1 at your level, nevertheless, here are your rewards. Okay, sh she'll still reward us. Good. Thanks, Dubily. Probably a first-time reward. Oof, no one's asking you to voice your gratitude here. Remain diligent in your training. Got some unity out of that. Okay, now I'll switch to a more physical team. Type 2. This one's strong! Be careful! Okay. Demon Unchained. I'm up! What? Do this. Let's go! I should have her... I should have Angelica move first so she can break the enemy. Hey, coming at you! Ah, uh, dang it. Turn. Oh well, whatever. I don't, I don't need her drops that much anyways. What? Oh no, I didn't scan them. I have to do it all over again anyways. Alright, got my rewards. Thanks, Dubily. This is the novel you were looking for, Emma? It is. Thank you so much. I ordered a book for Becky, huh? That's right. Talking with Dorothy remind me just how fun it is to dive into a new story. Things sure to change, eh, Irene? Remember back at the academy when Emma was a shy wee bookworm? Just look at her now. Those eyes, those legs, those curves. Mm-hmm. You must be being uh, off the guys with a stick. You sure you can handle yourself around a babe like this, Irene? I don't know if I put it that way exactly. So anyone with eyes can see how beautiful she is. Irene, you don't have to. No use denying it, Emma. With great sexiness comes great responsibility. I mean, think about it. Lots of hot-blooded young lads on the ship. Best be sure you don't give anyone the wrong idea. A wee bit of attention can go right to their he heads. <laughs> she does have a point, Emma. Be careful not to break too many hearts. Oh dear, blush. Alright there! Imperial Chronicle 8. Oh, there's new master cards. To see you again. Breaking news war to start at noon September 1st. Governor General Rufus announced that Operation Jormungand is to start on September 1st, making it five days until Arabonia's forces attack the Calvert Republic. The Empire's successful military expansion 
The Imperial Army press office told us that even if they couldn't reveal the finer details, they thought it important to let everyone see the proof that Erebonia is an extremely powerful nation, made so by all its citizens' tireless efforts. The Imperial Army was originally comprised of 20 armored divisions, but five more have been established following recent conscriptions. The new recruits are led by select experienced officers. Their divisions are to become reserve forces. RF has provided 12 Dragunov class railway cannons, beloved to be used by the main attack force. Their Gargantua class airships are expected to play a major part in military operations. While Calvert's forces are estimated to the number of around 840k soldiers, the Empire is sending 850k to the front, with reserve forces that bring a total to 1 million to 50,000. Besides our sure numerical superiority, the Imperial Army is both better trained and equipped, making our advantage clear as day. Notice beware of Calvert spies. Individuals believed to be Calvertian spies have been sighted in southeastern Lemaire. Espionage agents of the same affiliation also previously caused trouble in Heimdall. The public is advised to remain vigilant and report any suspicious activity to local authorities. Emperor Eugen's surgery scheduled. Emperor Eugen's condition is still critical following his shooting over a month ago. He is now scheduled to have surgery, performed by top medical staff while under close guard. Column workforce shortages continue. As the war looms near, towns and villages find themselves bereft of young men, who have been drafted into the army. But some conservative citizens, such as Friedel and Loggins, extend a helping hand to those who find it hard to cope with workforce shortages. These two former fencing club members have been honing their skills since graduation and undertake any work required by the local populace, from culling monsters to delivering parcels. Even farm work is fair game. We're just doing what we can, and if we can relieve some of the burn from the bracers, all the better, the helpful young heroes told us. The selfless pair certainly sets an excellent example that we could all stand to follow. Tita, Randy, is everything okay? Yeah, we were just working out some stuff between the Liberal and Crossbell teams. A cell and the others are guarding intel in East Arabonia right now. Why the SSS have Crossbell covered? The Imperial Army has been tapping their communications. They're using a courageous two systems to help strengthen the encryption. I see. Thanks to that, comms are effective, we've got a bit more wiggle room. But even then, we've only got so much range. Especially since it seems the Prince is trying to keep in contact with Calvert. Everything we can do feels so constricted, right down to our comms. Give us time, we'll work, we'll work something out. Supporting you guys is our top priority right now. If you're going to the service, let us know, and we'll help however we can. Thanks, we'll do. On an unrelated note, you're also in the Palm Party, right? I am. Do you play too, Tita? Yeah, I do. Ren got a little obsessed, so I got roped in too. Do you want to exchange account IDs? Definitely. What the match begin? Right here. I was about to double attack you. <sighs> Got lucky in the end. You this is, this is where you were. And I thought I might be able to hear that annoyingly cheerful voice one more time. I should have known better. Yusus, 
You know, Millium said she'd be watching over us the whole time. I don't know for sure if she'll reply or if she can even hear you, but I think she'd appreciate it if you try to talk to her. Perhaps. Though knowing her, I can't imagine she would enjoy a conversation in which she couldn't retort to whatever I said. Heh, <laughs> okay, that's a fair point. A chat that she couldn't take part in would probably drive her up the wall. Anyway, we should probably get moving. What was that? Looks to me Milliam doesn't want you to leave. You should stay with her a little longer. Typical. Alright, Milliam, you win. Oh, by the way. What's up? I just remembered I would occasionally play Vanish Masters with Milliam. She enjoyed it, and her skills match her enthusiasm for the game. Wow, really? Indeed, I intended to take her down if we had a rematch, but I could use some practice. Heh, <laughs> well, hit me up if you want to play. Night. Now let's begin. Lost. Neptuno times three. Now let's begin. Okay, put one Neptuno in my deck. Hopefully that's enough. doing? So he really did summon it. even had enough MP for that. No, he used it that MP cutting card. Oh no. I still have the field advantage, even if it took a few. Ow. Never mind.
Now we just whack you a bit. Another. No! Okay, do this. Heal a fairy in right here. I'm lost. Hey, Rena, here you got to talk to Val and Milliam again. Hey, nice work. And speaking as your engineering inspiration, I couldn't be prouder. It really wasn't a matter of engineering. But thanks all the same, Mint. You too, Gwen. Well, they're not really back. Back, we couldn't have done what we've done without the efforts of everyone here. Oh, save your thanks. I haven't done anything to earn them. If anything, I'm still working my way out of a pit of apologies. With my old friend bailing on you and my daughter feeling the war. Can't but feel responsible for many of the troubles you faced. No, that's nothing to be sorry for. That's right, Grampy Gwen. Plus, you've helped us come to grips with a ton of new tech. I do wonder where Schmitty got to, though. So you two don't have any idea where he is. Nope, he was helping out with the courageous too, but he never actually showed up in person. He mentioned something about having some business to take care of. But hey, that's Schmidt for you. He's going to do what he wants, whether you like it or not. No sense in worrying about it. For now, we'd better just tr concentrate on getting you through these rivalry things in one piece. Probably a good call. To do that, I'm going to need your help to bring out Valimar and Milliam's power. Leave it to me. If you have a lend a hand, let me know if you need advice on anything. Weapon maintenance, huh? That's right, we may have to join the battle during this operation. Since we have still time before it starts, it seemed like a good idea to make sure everything works like it should. As for me, I've been communing with my sword in an attempt to get some answers. I still haven't gotten over that wall, huh? Have you been able to pinpoint the problem? When I cross swords with the main campus students, I couldn't help but be frustrated at how inexperienced I am. And those main campus students didn't seem all that strong either. I could still hold my own, but I felt like there was something they all had that I was missing. Hmm. Even the generic students are stronger than you. That sucks. Personally, I think you're giving this way too much thought, Wayne. You're doing fine. Like, remember how you used to be terrible at swimming? We practiced and pushed through and overcame that hurdle just fine. Trust in yourself. That little extra confidence can go a long way. Stark. He's right, Wayne. Though I still think communing with your weapon is a good idea. Sometimes observing the condition of the blade and its all little nicks and scratches can tell you something about yourself. It works for me. I see. I must apologize. I fear I've been going on, uh, going about this all wrong. I'll take a step back, relax, and figure this out if it kills me. Remember, the goal is not to die, okay? Reen, perfect timing. Help me out here. I'm trying to convince Dorothy to take a break from pairing up guys and write about girls for a change. I told you, Angelica, I have firm rules when it comes to what I write about, and your request violates the most sacred one. I don't really have a dog in this fight, but if Dorothy really doesn't want to do it, there's no reason she should have to, right? Fair point, Reen, but I wouldn't want to see a writer of Dorothy's caliber squander her potential. The girl has the chops for this. Wait, Angelica, have you read my books? Of course, they're amazing. Which is why I think it's criminal for you to limit your stories to just one type of attraction. For now, let's start with a long talk about how appealing women can be, hmm? But I... How about that? Not even Dorothy is the match for Angelica. Now, what will you use to treat a patient with these symptoms? Let's see, I start by giving them the anti-venom, and then administer something to help stabilize their blood pressure. Wait, oh wait but a second, but some of these natural remedies can have side effects too. 
notes. I see now. This is one of the cases where you have to get a balance between the different drugs just right. Very perceptive. Well done. Medicines can have adverse reactions with what drugs the patient's already taking. It's important to remember that. I will, absolutely. I see you're getting lessons from Linda, Kyrie. Instructor Reen, yes. Well, a few. Just here and there when we're both free. I won't be able to hold proper classes again for a while, but I really do want Kyrie to learn about medicine in depth. That's a good, it's a good idea. You never know when a knowledge like this can come in handy. Good luck, both of you. Thank you. It certainly helps out such a, an eager pupil. Hey Ash, Gustav, I thought you guys were reading in here, but it looks like I was wrong. I'm trying to, but Ash here clearly has their other ideas. What? t rex have got articles and stuff, too. Still counts as reading. I'm not sure I'd call it literature, though. Weird question, Ash, but what kind of woman do you like? Do you have a type? I ask you the same thing if I thought I could get a straight answer out of ya. I like a girl who keeps things tight. Helps if she's flexible, too, if you know what I mean. That makes sense. Tatiana's good at keeping a tight schedule, but she's also adaptable, even if you might not see, her, uh, see it under her nerves. Not like that, you chump. You trying to piss me off, or are you really that st stupid? I'm sure I don't know what you mean. And it's kind of refreshing to see Ash on the receiving end of a joke for a change. The boss has gone to Draco Shrine. I don't think our showdown will be today. We need to make sure we're as ready as we can be. Yeah, let's see where the Courageous 2 takes us first. We need to get some training in. I agree. If you need my help, just let me know. I was in the mood for stretching my legs anyway. Thanks, I'll let you know. Ah, right, so you're the daughter of the Schleiden family. In that case, you must have met my darling Vincent before. Vincent Floral, yes, I've seen him a couple of times when he came to my father for training. Wait, Margarita, are you and Vincent betrothed? Betrothed? Oh, you can tell? The engagement's not official yet, but really, we're so in love it's a mere formality. You're a sharp one, Jessica. Uh, right. Margarita's version of reality seems to be a little different than ours, so I don't blame Jessica for being confused. Hey, Instructorine. Would you like to try some of Yuna's homemade hot cinnamon milk? Sounds tempting, but I'll pass. While I'm here, I'd like to compliment you on the great job you did at the Luna Shrine. Hey, it was a real challenge just to keep up with the older members of our team. And we learned so much new information, I still don't really know how to feel. But I am glad I got to hear Milliam's voice again. That's just really love for you. But I said, that was a figure of speech. Milliam is Milliam, it's as simple as that. Sure, of course, sorry to pry, Ollie. Huh. <laughs> It's been full on work since morning. Everyone's hard at work, though. Not, it's not just me. If I'm going to recharge for the afternoon, I'll switch things up by doing some cooking. Don't overwork yourself, you know. Keep it within reason. Hmm. Even though they're behind the counter, they don't sell anything. Oh, there's someone on the deck over there. Yo, what are you doing here? I was about to ask you the same. I didn't expect to run to you here. I'm taking a break from work. Gotta think something over. So convenient to have an airship. You can sm smuggle goods easily while enjoying the wind in your hair as you speed through the air. The bobcat's not bad, but I can't carry tanks or soldats. I've gotta think of my future of work opportunities. It's becoming clear to me that an airship is a must. I can't help but worry wh whenever she starts laying out her future plans. Don't worry, it's all good on my end. I've got this. Well, it's not good on my end. I couldn't reach you for over a month, but now you want to tag along and interview some third-party power? Not just that, but you even set this completely unrealistic event plan. Our paper is read by the military for ADOs' sake, although doing a joint feature with the Crossbell Times isn't a bad idea. Right, I already talked it through with Rex. Actually, it might have been his idea originally. Normally, I'd plot refuse, but some other staff here are on board of your proposal. However, it's not workable with some ch without some changes. Come to the office and we can uh, discuss the edits. So sorry, boss, but no can do. I'm not in the best terms of the military at the moment, so I'd rather keep a low profile. Can I just leave it in your capable hands? Is this all a joke to you? Ever he heard of the word responsibility? Maybe he's talking to her superior at the Chronicle. Sounds like she submitted some unorthodox proposal to the editor-in-chief. Well, not my business anyway. Oh, Elise, uh, uh, Elise, you, know, you two seem to have uh, to be you two having some kind of meeting? Yeah, I was giving her some tips about the latest OS, the one that was also used in the Merkaba. Well, I wanted to be able to operate the terminal more efficiently. So I was asking for her advice on how to best use the developer mode, which should let me create custom environments. It's good at racing you two so fired up. 
Just try not to overwork yourselves. I'm still feeling fine. How about you, Elisa? Do you need a break? We may have ha had that trial this morning, but I'm doing good. Don't worry about me. Besides, I'm not the only one who's a little emotionally fraught right now. All this uh, uh, did was help me guard my resolve. I think I'd go crazy if I just had to stay cooped up in my room the whole time anyway. Alright, so long as you're sure. Thank you so much for everything, Elisa. I'm really surprised by how fast Elise and Princess Elfin took to the terminal. And Toa, well, she goes without saying, I don't think we could hope for better support. Elisa is a really good teacher. She helped me out a lot. I'm going to do everything I can to meet your expectations. Well, well, hey, Instructorine. Bet you're feeling pretty tuckered out after that trial, huh? We can fix you up right uh, quick with some of Margarita's viper juice. A few sips and it'll zap the life right back into you. It sounds very er, potent. <laughs> You've got good taste. <laughs> Come again. Hey, Elliot. Kroos, chewing some pull? Well, no disrespect to any of you hardworking types, so I figure it's important to just kick back every now and then. Yeah, I could use some time off to center myself before the performance. No arguments here. So who's winning? Crow, the lazy king of kicking back? Heh, <laughs> you're not wrong, but do you have to put it like that? Seriously though, have you played against Elliot lately? You wouldn't believe how much he's improved. What can I say? When you travel around as much as I do, you get people inviting you to play all kinds of games. I played an awful lot of pool, so I don't plan on letting Crow win that easily. Oh, you've really come out of your shell the last couple of years. Can't wait to see you turn the tables on the Crow. Heh, <laughs> I'm on it. Guys, I'm right here. Hmm, are you sure you want to do that? What the? Where'd that move come from? Okay, maybe if I send this guy here. Hey, Sydney, Maki is teaching you how to play chess? Something like that. I've been posing him a number of chess problems to get him help him get a grip on the finer points of the game. Chess problems, huh? Like trying to reach checkmate in a set number of turns with some prearranged pieces? Looks like you're really into it, Sydney. I figured I ought to show everyone I'm more than just a pretty face. Charging in all gung-ho like I always do is going to cause problems down the line. I can't let that happen. Learning chess is my way of training myself to think things through a little more, a little more casual, uh, carefully. Not many people are as honest about their faults as you. Yeah, you're more mature than I realized. Plus, chicks dig smart guys. Times are changing, I gotta change with them or I'll be left behind. Okay, now it all makes sense. You'd have been better off keeping that side of things quiet. And there's a side quest here too. Something smells good in here. Did you bring the prince something to eat? I sure did. Much to my delight, Sandy told me she would try to recreate the very risotto my mother used to make. Well, I know it's a proper etiquette. I asked her to bring it to me so I could eat it here. And here, it is here where I was thrown in for a loop upon my discovery of the nostalgic dish's formal name, Lenheim Risotto. Lenheim Risotto. Your mother created a dish so legendary it was actually named after her. This is amazing. It really is just like mother used to make. Danny, I don't know how to thank you. I never thought I would taste this dish again. I'm truly really blessed to have such a considerate cousin. Oh, that's nice. Wait, do you, what do you say? Second cousin, technically, on his mother's side. We only recently found out ourselves. And after all this time, it did come as quite a shock. I'll bet, though I guess I always did kind of assume you must have had some fringe relatives in Ulster. I never, just never expected one of them would be Sandy. We weren't trying to hide from you or anything. It just never came up till now. To return to the matter at hand, I really have to do something to show my gratitude. What will you say to a private concert at the Sunny Spot Inn? That sounds great, it's just what the town needs to keep their spirits up. Now, you two really do make for great, great cousins. Hmm. Probably save the side quest up for tomorrow. Hey, Leonora, you're hanging up the flight crew today, right? Huh? Yeah, it's a real honor. They made me assistant pilot and everything. It's a little different from getting around the sea, but ship's a ship. This is pretty fun. Well, that's good. Whereas ship spikes are celestial, you've got a real affinity for machines. You remind me of Angelica in that way. Thanks, I'll take that as a compliment. Hmm, that should just about do it for now. Where are you up to, Laura? Oh, Reen, I was just restocking the ointments among a few of our other supplies. That said, there are actually a few things that we I'd like to take care of before we head to the Sanctuary if possible. That's to say, I'd like to head down to Bryonia Island to finish up my training. I see, you're preparing for a possible showdown with the Viscount then. That's right, Fire is sure to be waiting for us. As such, it's my duty as successor to the RSA name to improve myself as much as I humanly can. Now may be the only opportunity I'll have to do so. Laura. You needn't worry so much over me, Reen. All that matters is that my father made it through alive, no matter what state he may find himself in. 
When the time comes to face him, I will prove I can rise to the challenge. I swear it, on the blade he himself bequeaths upon me. So that's why she's finishing up her training. That's probably something I should be thinking about myself. Would it be okay if I accompany you, Laura? We will need all the training we can muster if we, can ho we hope to get through the this coming rivalry, after all. I see, I don't mind, of course. Having you there should make things no trouble at all. Let's be off then. Re and Laura took Belmar to Brayonia Island. They decided to finish their training with a no-holds-barred sparring match. Do I have to play this one? They still have to find a, an appropriate spot. Oh no. The, I, so she really does have to fight him. Reen, what's the matter? This presence, it's... It isn't possible. It's the same as what happened with Rosalia. We have to fight... Uh, they should have warned us, dang it. Well, we've beat these guys before. Two of them, at least. Look! That's the thing we find in the old schoolhouse, Loa Erebonius. Crap, I didn't really have an optimal setup for this. I just saw a number of them appear in Heimdall alongside the Grawl. But it's huge, how could something like that have been there without us? No, it can't be. Could be due to the Septarian's shell buried here? I think so. I mean, it's a fragment of something from before the Great One was formed. Everything that was going on in Operation Norman Gun could have set up a reaction between the shell and the spirit veins. Maybe we should whack it with Balamar. What, what the? Where's it going? Looks like it's heading for Ordis. What? That's a little much for a bonding event. What insane destructive power. We can't let something like that reach Ordis. Maybe it's because we're in this subspace, but I can't sense Valimar. The Orcus who isn't connecting either. We won't be able to get in touch with the Ordis for a while. We'll just have to stop it ourselves then. It won't be easy, so, but as long as I'm with you, I know we stand a chance. The Gear will find a way. You're right, let's go, Laura. Are you kidding me? The battle against the giant Loa Erebonius raged long and hard, off screen. Reen Laura made strategic use of the terrain and gradually pushed the Goliath back. Working closely in sync to continue their onslaught until finally. Termination slash dust! Now takes the wrath of the Arsades. Something that required a whole party back then. Now only two of them. But if Reen didn't show up for this one, would Laura have to solo it by herself? Ah. Who looks like that did the trick? Nice job, Laura. I knew you had it in you. Your technique just now was every bit as good as the Viscounts, even better even. You think so? It didn't feel quite right to me. Maybe I really have taken a step closer to my father. Huh. Laura? Sorry, it's just so bizarre to see how far we've come. A single low Erebonius was almost more than the entirety of, cl what of Class 7 could handle once. But now, just two of us can defeat one. I never have thought uh, fighting for someone with all your heart would grant this much power. Laura. I will neither run nor hide from my feelings. I love you, Reen. Not just as a dear friend. Or as a fellow swordsman walking the same path. But with my whole heart. Huh? It's alright, you don't have to give me an answer. This is hardly the time or place for a romance. There are other more important things to demand our attention. You must win the war rivalries, and I have to suppress my father. To do that, we need to ca dedicate ourselves to improving our skills. You're right, I'll be counting on you from here on. Reen and Laura retreated to the lodge to patch up their wounds. After a short rest, they returned to the ship to Garrick. Huh? 
That was supposed to be your final special moment. But I'm not going to commit to that one. Okay, after her revenge, she's all the way in Nindwali for some reason. Oh, here you are, Laura. L nice work back there. Thank you, I've rested up enough to prepare to undergo the trial at the Sanctuary. I'll be counting you again, then. I never expected love to could make a person so strong. I feel unstoppable now, like even surpassing my father is a goal within my reach. That's great, I don't intend on slowing down either. I appreciate the help. What's me that... Celine, what's she doing in a place like that? I'm not sure what she's saying, but it sounds like she's speaking with someone. What's going on here? Maybe I should go talk with her. Hey, Celine, when the world... Brianos? Hey, we'll be flying out then. It's close to the village, right? Yes, please. Celine! That blue bird, where the hell did it go? Close to the village. Could be Velmar? When the idea of where the location could be, Reen hurriedly boarded Velmar and began searching for Celine. There you are, Celine. Huh? What are you doing here? Hey, you're getting distracted there, are we? Are you practicing combat? <laughs> Celine, let me help. No way, just stay where you are. Don't bite in while I'm training, got it? Wait, what? Let's make an exception for this sh this time, shall we? She was you all along, Vita. Would you like to try this again, Reen? So, a 2 on 2. Let's go on with it then, Celine. This isn't how it's supposed to go down. Oh well. I don't know what's going on, but if Celine needs my help, she's got it. Is this an actual battle that I can play? Reen took part in a challenging practice session. My, my, that was more satisfying than I thought it would be. We'll meet again soon, you two. Ah, uh, we lost. No. Who now can you explain what this is all about? Wasn't that Bluebird? You can be real, a real nuisance sometimes, you know? At least you didn't entirely ruin things for me. Why you come here anyway? Also, it's completely unnecessary to have Elmar send you all this way. You're the one who just disappeared without a word. I was worried about you. I had a feeling you wouldn't have done that without a reason, but I didn't want to take any chances. Oh. Heh, <laughs> my bad. I'm sorry I worried you. Wasn't that Bluebird be this familiar? Yes, that was Grianos, an illusion of him anyway. We lost to an illusion? Wow, we suck. He was destroyed back then, but Vita smashed some of the scattered energy. Recreating a destroyed familiar isn't easy. But I wouldn't put it past Vita to actually bring a new one into existence instead of conjuring an illusion. Heh, <laughs> yeah, Vita's definitely powerful enough. They're both very special. Rianos was created using a unique mana in order to help Vita reach her full potential as a witch. I rolled to assist Emma. I was given the ability to speak in shapeshift, but I'm not nearly as powerful. I decided to cede to my improvement myself. I see, that's why you disappeared, to train. After what we learned in Luna's Sanctuary, I could see no other choice. I have my pride and responsibilities as Emma's familiar and as part of Rose's spirit. But that's not all, I suppose. What do you mean? Green, you're as sharp as a marble, aren't you? Why do you think I went beyond my duty as an Emma's familiar to provide assistance to the rest of you? Why do I they even go so far as to take on a human form for training? It's because there's someone I want to look after, duh. Oh. Sometimes I ask myself why I bother. It's worth it though, despite everything. I fought alongside you in the Civil War and stuck with you even after you graduated. As I learned more about humans, I discovered we shared certain values. I've changed. You changed me. Celine. Hey, I'll get you for that someday. You better promise me that you won't ever give up. Meow? Okay, I promise. If anything knocks me down, I'll get back up right away so I can keep going. I won't be trying to trust you having me. I have no idea what fate has in store, but I'll keep on fighting. And I'm sure you'll need my help along the way. That's fine, though. I'll be there for you. 
I'm counting on you to stand on your own two feet most of the time, Reen Schwarzer. Hell, keep that in mind. I forgot Celine turned back into a cat. He took a briefer to Garrett and head back to Courageous 2. Typical, I was hoping to train in secret, but no, you just had to find me, didn't you? Anyway, this is no time for us to be chatting. We've got a second rivalry coming up. Got it. Oh, you're right, gotta focus. Kurt, what's that re you're reading? Oh, instructor, it's a letter from Mueller, actually. He gave it to me before I left. The lieutenant colonel, huh? He gave you a letter even though you were face to face? That's right, I found it rather curious myself. I only just started to read it, but... Well, it was more a family matter than anything, really. No need to concern yourself over it. He wrote me to take care of it when I had the time. That said, preparing for the sanctuary should be our foremost priority at the moment. Huh? Lieutenant Colonel Mueller wouldn't write a letter like this for no reason. Plus, I'm pretty curious, I'll admit. I say you have plenty of time, Kurt. After all, this is my own pupil's family marriage we're talking here, not some stranger's. If I can help in any way, all you have to do is let me know. I'll be there for you best as, 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 best as I can. Instructor. Thank you so much. I know I can be somewhat of a burden at times. There's a certain place I'd like to go. Can I get you to come to me? Reen Kurt set up to Gar. Along the way, they talked about the contents of the letter. I don't see any military police here. I thought this was supposed to have been converted into a conscription office. I suppose they left everything empty here when their forces were diverted to the Heimdall area. Oh, there you are, Kurt. Hello, Mueller. We meet again, Lieutenant Colonel. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, this reunion came earlier than expected. I'm glad to see you nonetheless, Reen. I apologize for calling you away for this. I'm sure you have more pressing matters to attend to. It's no problem. I'm here to lend Kurt my full support as an instructor. And if that wasn't enough of a reason, you did go out of your way to delegate me as his partner. I still can't quite believe it. Do you really find Roland's twin swords? It's true. Well, we look at that. Roland Vander was a legendary knight who protected Emperor Dracos during the War of the Lions. Yeah, I was supposed to find one of those swords during Kurt's previous bonding event, but I, I did not commit to that one. So now it, they both show up here. He met his end in that war, and the twin swords he wielded were lost. We stumbled upon them while we were riding the Courageous too. It was as if something led us to them. As the fate demanded, they be found this current era. You know what, what I summon you here for, don't you, Kurt? Indeed, I read the letter. You want me to have Roland's twin swords under one condition. And Instructor Reed and I go through with this trial of yours. Forgive my asking, but why am I included in this? This seems to be Vander family business. I'm not even trained in this school of swordsmanship. I understand how arbitrary all this must feel to you, but it wasn't my decision to make. The moment I grasp the sword, I sense Roland's will. The two of you stand before me as successor of Roland's dual blade style and inheritor of the Ashen Knight. Moreover, your relationship it's not unlike Roland and Emperor Dreykels, who cut their way through the War of the Lions side by side. Roland died before his time. I refuse to stand by and let history repeat itself with you, Kurt. That's why you must prove yourself more able than him. And you, Ashen Chevalier, show me you've surpassed Dreykels himself. Are you seeing this aura coming off the swords? So we've got to defeat both you and Roland in spirit. Very well, accept the challenge. I've long looked up to you and my ancestor of legend. If it's a test of metal you want, I'll face you both head on. Well said, Kurt. If it's, two, if it's the two of us, I'm sure we can accomplish this much. Let's do it, Kurt. And so their fierce battle began. Mueller, empowered by Roland Spirit, came at them with an unrelenting assault, attacking with even more power than he showed in his fight outside the Infernal Castle. But Reed and Kurt struck in person, sinking with each other, managing to turn a battle into an even match. And then... Now! Ha! Huh. Beam in a cutscene. Pant. Not too shabby at all. Indeed, well done. Roland's equally impressed by the ability you've demonstrated today. You've earned the right to wield his swords, Kurt. Thank you, Mueller. So how do they look? 
They fit you perfectly, Kurt. You certainly look the part as Roland's successor. I'm proud of you, Kurt. You're encouraging you to join the branch campus was definitely the right choice. That means a lot to hear. I'm well aware I've yet to reach the heights of swordsmanship or experience you, Father, and Roland have. But I've managed to gain so many things nobody ever, else ever could. And I owe it to uh, all of the friends I've come to bond with, including Instructorine. Couldn't have said it better myself, Kurt. Working together, I know we'll reach ever greater heights. Of course. Reen Kurt bid Mueller farewell, wishing to see him sooner rather than later. He returned to the Courageous, Kurt carrying his new source of undisguised joy and astonishment. A cosmetic item, of course. You're not gonna let me save on you materials. Or Zemurian ore. I hardly feel I'm worthy of inheriting Roland's blades. That being said, I know I've also been able to do things nobody else would in a way only I could do. I'll continue to aim for greater heights of that in mind. Roland swords, yes. Hmm? What's that you're reading there, your highness? Reen, it's a letter addressed to me. Here, take a look. Alpha, they need to speak with, to, with you. I'll be weighing at what remains of the fuel exercise camp near Heimdall. You may bring exactly one other person along to escort you. What if I chose not to do this? Who would she bring? Prev then, this letter. That's the seal of the golden cell on, on it, and whoever wrote it called you by name. Indeed, they must have jumped through quite a few hoops to have it delivered to the airship. It could be nothing more than a prank, but naturally my curiosity is piqued. And there's only so many people who could have sent a letter like this. What should I do? It's possible that this might be a trap. It probably won't be, because, you know, none of this real these choices really matter. Allow me to serve as your escort, your highness. You do want to go find out what this is all about, right? You know me too well, Reen. Are you sure it's alright though? What if this is some form of trap? It'll be okay, I'll be right there to protect you no matter what happens. Let's get all to Valmar and head on over. Reen and Alphen away their chance before using Valmar's warp function to infiltrate the city limits of Heimdall. Then they made their way through the uncannily quiet roads to the old fuel exercise camp on the South Ossia Highway. There you are, what kept you? I had a feeling it'd be you. If that's the case, they should have made it so that Kurt go, uh, uh, comes along too. Reen, I see you've come along as Elfin's personal escort. Yeah, I'm guessing maybe she would have asked Kurt if Reen did not go. Probably. I must apologize for the unsightly display you were forced to witness yesterday. Your Highness. Enough being around the bush, Cedric. Why send a letter like that so suddenly? No, tell me, was this all just a ploy to get Reen to come? Nothing of the sort. I gave up on Reen a long time ago. We'll have to face each other in the rivalry someday after all. You're the one I wanted to see, Alfin. I'll get right to the point. I want you to leave the Crimson Wings. Go to Ordis. You'll be safe there with Mother until all this all blows over. So that's it. As if I could ever do something so pre pre preposterous. How can you expect me to sit idly by while Oliver and his allies fight tooth and nail to? What does it matter either way? Do you honestly believe you can make a difference? The real world is nothing like the confines of the palace walls or the gates of St. Astraea. You don't stand a chance on your own. Her Highness has become an invaluable member of the Courageous Two's crew. We have no reason to doubt her abilities. Perhaps I was overstating things. I don't think you're entirely helpless. But it's a big ship and there are plenty of capable force students on board as it is. It's not going to drop out of the sky just because you decide to leave. Perhaps you did manage to find a purpose during the Civil War, as a symbol of the Imperial family. But there exists no such place for you in the squabble between Jormund Gunn and Mil Mirage. You know that, don't you? This has gone beyond just a mere domestic conflict. There, this is a war that could very well engulf the entire world as we know it. The fury that's about to be unleashed is greater than you could possibly imagine. It's only a matter of time before you, Oliver, and the Crimson Wings get caught in the crossfire. 
And once that happens, there won't be any last minute miracles left to save you. Reen, surely you see where I'm coming from here. I know you care about at least every bit as much as I do about Alfin. Is it is a warship really a pl any place for them? Don't we owe it to our sisters to get them away from all this fighting? Well... Reen's too kind to say it, but the fact is you're not helping, Alfin. You're not a soldier. You're not even a military academy student. You have no business being anywhere near a battlefield. Think of Mother. Having you cl close by would be such a comfort to her. Or you could go and be with Fire before her his surgery. Though even that's a little too close for to the front lines for my liking. That's enough, Cedric. Thank you. I know this is all your way of showing me you care. Of course I care. You're my sister. My kith and kin. When we were children, you always stood for my sake. Nobles who deem me too weak to be error. Commoners who fund blindly over your intellect and grace. You defend me to all of them alike. I was so grateful, at the same time so, so frustrated. But now our roles have reversed. It's time for the strong to protect the weak, the way it should be. You're right, sometimes I hate just how powerless I've been. You know, we could just buy you a normal staff. But I'm not going to use that as an excuse to give up on myself. I'm sorry, Cedric. It's taken me too long to bring myself to say that. When your health failed you after the war, there was nothing I could do. Then somehow Chancellor Osborne saved you, but that was when your lust for power began. You were like a different person. As time went on, the change in you started to frighten me. I felt so guilty for not being there when you needed me most. I just didn't know how I could face you anymore. Perhaps a part of me felt like you'd grown up and left me behind too. Alfin. But look at where it's gotten us now. You love your, our family more than anyone, yet did nothing to protect Father and Oliver from their fates, and I'm no better for laying you. Stop it! Stop it right now! I will not. We need to talk about this now more than ever. You're my god Mill Mirage. None of it means a single thing. The one thing that's always mattered to me, to us above else, is family. Where crimson or radiant, I have no intention of leaving these rings. I will find the strength to support both Oliver and Reen, and even stand up against you should it come to that. Princess Alfin. I'm sorry you feel that way, Alfin. That was, this was your final chance. Prince Cedric. We'll put an end to this next time we meet, permanently. Alfin, Reen, I hope you don't come to regret this path you've chosen. Cedric, wait! Water surgery is coming up. Is it too much to ask that you pray for him? If the whole family bands together, Adios is sure to hear us. Majestically said, Your Highness. It's conviction like that uh, that makes you the pride of the Radiant Wings of all of Erebonia. I'm sorry, Reen. I know I went too far, but I had to say something. So why... Why did things have to turn out like this? In spite of it all, he's still my brother. I'm the closest family he has. Exactly. You reached out to him in the only way you could. He may not realize how right you were just yet, but it'll come around eventually. Kurt and I will make sure of it. Reen. I feel like this bonding event really should have included Kurt somehow, considering he kind of has a stake in this with the prince there. <laughs> Reen Elfin used Valmar to escape the city limits and return to the Courageous 2. Maxed out. Thank you for all the time you've spent with me, Reen, for being at my side. It's been a true honor, Your Highness. I think that was the first time Cedric and I truly shared how we felt of each other. Though I didn't mean for you to see that side of me. You have nothing to be embarrassed about, I promise. You're always so kind, Reen. I must appreciate it. I've decided. It's time I finally time I face him in earnest. Please accompany me, Reen. I need someone else on my side. Of course, Your Highness. Toa, what are you doing out here? Huh, well, I... 
Oh, are you going down to the surface? If so, I'll get things ready right away. No, it's okay. There's no need to rush. I was just wondering if there was something on your mind. Seems like it. Well, it's not really a big deal or anything. But now you think I'm acting weird. You're not going to let it go, are you? I'd rather not worry you, so... Troopers, some information came through from the special support section. Not the airship incident. The crash 17 years ago. Oh. I've been on the route between Crossbell and North Ambria. Seems like it's a pretty desolate area, at least in terms of people. I wonder if we might see something if we look down on it from the North Highlands. That's an idea. I'm also curious about what happened back then. Maybe I can be of some help to Toa. Hey Toa, there's a, here's an idea. How about we go to the North Highlands together? Huh? I've actually been discussing this with guys for a while now. Sounds like it's going to be one of the major threats of the war, so doing some recon might would have been, would be smart. The Merkaba is under repair, so guys had given, kind of given up on the idea. We should manage to find if we have Alamar take us there through the spirit path. That would be definitely work, but... Are you, are you really busy, Reen? I think this could lead to some really useful information for the Radiant Wings. I'm sure guys wants to visit his family, but it's not like bringing you along would cause things to run any less smoothly. In fact, I wager the opposite. Having you along would be a great help. What do you say? Well... Toa was initially a little hesitant to the idea of coming along, but Reen's assistance finally, eventually won her over. They met with Gaius and with Elmer's assistance, took the spirit path there. Oh, so Gaius can't tag along for uh, another person's event. We really made it. I knew we could count Reen and Valimar. Their defense are, are still down. Guys, you sh should get going. Right, I'll be back after I check in with my family. I'll leave the repeater to you, Toa. Of course, give your family my best. Yeah. Okay, I guess we'd better get to setting up the repeater. Yeah, maybe we should set it up behind the boulder so it can't be seen from the watchtower. The airship went down just beyond this mountain range, right? Yeah, and the, the no man's land right between Erebonia and Calvert. The file said all evidence of the incident's been covered up. It seems there's nothing left here. Oh. Hey, Reen, thank you. I think I feel a little bit better now. As a kid, I was pretty unhappy that I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to my parents. But now, I feel like I can finally move on. You're lying. Huh? Come on, how long have we known each other? We can't hide from me. You're always putting others before yourself, even more than I do. But right now, there's no one here but you and me. For once, just be honest and open up about how you're feeling. Reen. Uh, do I look that down about it? It was 17 years ago. I was only four at the time, so I barely remember it at all. Just blurry images of people who I guess might have been my mother and father. Grief isn't determined by time. Besides, that's not all, is it? Grief is, isn't the only thing you're holding back. It's okay, just let it out. Reen, why would you say all this to me? I've been trying this so hard not to let it get to me, but now... The war's just a few days away, and my uncle's been drafted. Hundreds of thousands of lives, maybe even millions, are hanging in the balance here. I was so happy, so happy that when Angie came back I could have cried. But George is still with the enemy, and there's no guarantee he'll change his mind anytime soon. Then there's Crow. It, it seems like it's impossible for him not to disappear forever when this is all this is over. We don't even know for sure what will happen to you, Reen. Yeah. My body still belongs to the Great Twilight, and, well, we all know about my heart. I might be headed towards the same fate as Crow. Crow, George, my parents, my grandfather, everyone I've ever loved has disappeared. If I lose you too, I can't. It's okay, Toa, I'm here. I don't know what the future holds, but I promise you, I won't give up until the very end. So please. Oh, you're impossible, Reen. Even if it's just an empty promise, I want to hear you say it. 
You bring me all the way out here, hold me in your arms, and still, still, it's not fair. It's just not fair. This breeze feels kind of nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Thank you, Reen. I've been holding it all that in for a long time. I never realized just how, just how stubborn I am. Angelica and Crow noticed what you were going through. Everyone was worried, so I took the liberty of doing something about it. I did show you a pretty pathetic side of me before graduation, after all. Oh, right. Yeah, I almost forgot about that. It was all Crow's fault. Then he came back and acted like it was nothing. Yeah, uh, yeah, his behavior still bars me a bit. And looks like we've both embarrassed ourselves in front of one another, huh? Fate must have brought us together, huh? I consider it an honor. Hey, Reem. I mean it, you know? Every word. Huh? It's your fault I'm saying this, you know? I, I didn't have the courage to bring it up at all now. You brought me all the way out here and made me spill my guts. But at least I didn't have anything left to be afraid of after that. Toa. Yeah, think of it as payback. I still got plenty of flowers. Wanna go offer them together? I'm sure my parents will appreciate it. Sure, I'd be glad to. Once guys return a group offer another prayer. Afterward, they use the spirit path to return the courageous too. Thank you for taking the time to go to Nord with me, Reen. It's allowed me to come to terms with a lot of buried feelings. They're more manageable now. Koa. Anyway, we have to make the, these patrol activities practically perfect, right? Always be here to help when you're on the service. Don't hesitate to let me know if you need anything, okay? Thanks, Toa. By the way, let's keep what happened in order to ourselves, okay? Even Angie and Crow are an, ex are an exception. Uh, right, of course. I'm sure the time will come when, I'm, uh, when, I'll be, when I'll be able to find the words to fully convey my emotions. I... Come on, you can't just keep dropping lines like that. Your corniness aside, I do understand I can wait as long as you need, Reen. Woo! Were you just training, Gaius? Yeah, the full-scale operations are picking up now, and I figure I should go ahead and up my training regimen. Recent events have made me realize just how inexperienced I am here. I see. But you can't let what happened to the Merkaba bar you. Everyone you included did everything they could. Things couldn't have gone better, uh, couldn't have gone better considering the circumstances. <laughs> Thanks, Reen. I'm not that worked up about it, so don't worry about me, okay? As a Grosswer, I vowed to be of help to you all, Reen. I need to figure out what I'm lacking. That's what the focus of my training here. What's he lacking, huh? Well, well if I had to say... Hey, I've got a proposal for you guys. How about we pay a visit to Brigadier, Brigadier General Bardius? Huh? Rumor has his ancestors are warriors from Nord, so wouldn't that make him the perfect person to ask? Maybe you'll be able to get a few tips that help you work on the areas that you feel like you're lacking in. That does make some sense, now that I think about it. But he must be pretty busy with the Viceland army. Well, once that's settled, let's make sure you get in touch. Green guys got in touch with the Viceland army and managed to reach Brigadier General Bardius. They decided to meet up in the Avon Hill since the Brigadier General had operations to attend to close by. Thanks for agreeing to meet with us, Brigadier General. Yeah, we appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule. I wouldn't do this just for anyone, but since it's you guys, I got Ilya Aurelia to lend us a, a, a Baldufa. Guess it helped, it, it was free at the time anyway. I may have lost touch with my heritage, but I figure I can still do some good here. I truly am an equal you came. I'm ready to dig into whatever you have to teach me. Whatever it takes to hone my skills as a grosser and protect my loved ones from whatever danger there may be. Oh, so that's how it is. Say, so guys, how do you like to spar with me? Huh, right now? Why not? You've got to put a sh that strike of yours to the test if you want to find your weak spots. 
Be warned, I will go all out against you and expect you to do the same. What do you say? I'm up for it. Chances like this don't come along every day. Come at me with everything you've got. Absolute delay spam. A fierce battle between Gaius and Wallace followed. Wallace struck on full force, unleashing moves that had even forced the Almighty Conflagration into a corner. Gaius refused to give in, and with the power of the stigma, was able to match his opponent blow for blow. Man, Gaius, you kept pace with him the whole time. That's no small feat. Looks like the rumors about you are true, Black Whirlwind. You're not so bad yourself, Soaring Phoenix. You've got some impressive skills. Between your own natural ability and that stigma, I don't see this battle ending anytime soon. Guess I'll have to call in some friends. Horses? That's right, thoroughbred war warhorses from the Bardius family's own stables. They're both fine, courageous mounts. Think you can handle them? We're settling it with a joust, huh? Fine by me. Raw! Raw! Bell moves into a head to head jousting match. It looked to be a long, grueling fight before either combatant gave in, but then. Ugh. Ah. So we're already, huh? Got hands to you, Wallace. You really gave me what for out there. Turned out to be not so ev uh, evenly matched as before, huh? Can you tell me what was the difference there, Gaius? Yeah, I think so. I had a feeling I lost sight of something all the time, but now it's finally starting to fall into place. Gaius. Well, good. All that wasn't for nothing, then. It's been a while, so I think I'll treat my own horse to a longer my horse to a longer ride. Won't you two stay back and rest a bit? You going to be all right? Yeah, just a couple of scratches. I think he he held back a little for the horse's sake. I'm still kind of in awe of him, though. It didn't take much for him to see right through me. Sounds like you pieced something together yourself. Yeah, I know now where I've been going wrong. I got so caught up in being a girl's rider that I forgot about what was so important to me as plain old Gaius Warzel. The reason I came to Erebonia, to Forest, was to learn about the outside world. To take all I picked up here and turn into the strength to protect my homeland. You know, thinking back, the rest of, the, of us were really amazed by the lengths you were willing to go to. You had to adapt to an entirely new landscape, all for the sake of taking care of what you had back home. That really means something. I can say we're all inspired by how devoted you are to your land and people. And I don't know if I'd go that far. I feel like I was just charging in without linking things through. But it's true, I always had Nord and everyone there at the front of my mind when I did. Even inheriting the stigma and everything we went through during the Civil War was part of that. They were the winds that guided me from the very start, and the reason I'm staying here right now. I guess having wings makes it harder to feel a connection to the people back on the ground. But now I feel like I finally got my head out of the clouds and back where it belongs. I'll see to it it stays that way. Erebonia is my second home. I'll protect it to the very end, along with Nord and the rest of the continent. Even the whole world if it comes to that. Now you never do anything by halves, do you? I'm glad you got your head on to your head together, guys. I'll be counting on you then. Of course, right back at you, Reen. Welcome back. Round two. I was hoping you'd be up for a nerd adjusting match. My performance back there was just pitiful. This time, I'll show you what a war Nord warrior can really do. So what do you say, Brigadier General Wallace Bardius? Ah, now this is what being young's all about. You got yourself a rematch, guys, Warzel. Following that, we watch Geist and Wallace's equally balanced fight through to the end. Going to train some more? Yeah, my sparring session with the Brigadier General opened my eyes so wide for gun. I want to internalize the emotion I felt then, while the memory is still fresh. Well, that's one way to do it. As long as you know when enough is enough. Of course, I don't mind limits. You've got nothing to worry about with me. Musei, what are you doing here? Uh, Musei? Oh, hey, sorry, it looks like I lost myself in thought there for a bit. Maybe it's because things are finally a little less tense. Are you talking about the Luna Shrine? No, the Pentagirl, right? There's a part of me that wants to say it was reckless, but I'm just glad you made it through safely, really. 
Thanks, Instructor. The necessity of Operation Mill Mirage as a backup plan hasn't changed. Thanks to the Radiant Wings and everyone else, I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. And the fact of the matter is, I also need to recharge my batteries for you, Instructor. Considering the circumstances, maybe I should spend some time with her. I get what you mean. Maybe I'll take the opportunity to charge my own batteries a bit as well. Want something to drink, me say? It'll be my treat. Oh? I, mean, I can't think of anyone else I'd rather spend my time with, Instructor. The lounge is great and all, but maybe you could indulge me and listen to a request. There's a place I'd like to go, and I think this is the perfect chance. Why not? We can take the opportunity to gather some information, too. Reed and Musi left the ship and headed towards Ordis. After some quick intel gathering, they ended up on the southern coastal road. Oh, I'm glad the weather is so lovely. I don't think I've ever been this far down the Oros Coastal Road. But the beach you guys went to is somewhere else, right? Yes, yeah, so it's a spot popular with locals and tourists alike, or so I heard. This, is, this right here is a private beach belonging to the Cayenne family. With, the, with things the way they are, no one's felt like using either beach for a while. Of course, that's certainly good news for us at the moment. What do you say, Instructor? How about we make the most of our time alone? All right, just this once. Hey, take that. Yorg, now you've done it. Hey, don't run, you'll trip. Over here, instructor, catch me if you can. Oh, what's this? Instructor, look, isn't this a pretty seashell? Seems like they've piled up a little since last time, hmm? But it feels different this time somehow. Then what's wrong, you say? Oh, it's nothing. I'm just a little tired out. It's been ages since I last let loose like this. Uh, yeah, you're like a kid on summer vacation. I guess nothing beats coming back to your hometown, huh? It's special, I'll give you that. I have so many memories of this place. My parents and I used to come here together all the time, until they passed. Oh, that's right, you said you'd lost them in an accident at sea. What kind of people were they? I told my grandfather... Uh, uh, I'm told my grandfather on my father's side of the family was known for being hard and merciless. My father, on the other hand, was a very kind man. Despite this, he was a good leader and the clearest successor to the Cayenne Duke them. As for my mother, from what I can remember, she was always very cool-headed, like no problem was too much for her. She used to travel all around La Mer on business. While she was away, Far would teach me to play all kinds of games, chess, cards, even an eastern one called Shogi. That's when my talent started to show itself. You've been able to analyze the world like a game for that long? It yeah, must be because of my Arnor heritage, like Rosalia said. Maybe playing with me so much was my father's way of teaching me how to use this power. I ever played a lot of games with me too. That's where I picked up my head for strategy. That kimono I wore before was originally a gift to my mother from her father. It's a little too big for me, but I had some alterations made. They sound like great parents. Yes, they were. After I died, my sh uncle shipped me off to San Shreya, and that was that. But when I found the world as a game like they taught me, I felt like I was still connected to them. I guess that's why I analyze things so much. I can see how that would happen. But you know, you don't need to do that all the time, right? Those skills aren't the only thing your parents left you. You're right. I may have been young, but I still remember the boundless love they showed me. And I felt that same affection from Elise, Alpin, my instructors, Yuna. Everyone, really. The plan I put together for Mil Mirage caused a lot of suffering. But maybe it wasn't all bad. It led me to Class 7, after all. When I found you all just a moment later, I might have lost what really made me human. Musei. You're not alone anymore. Please don't ever forget that. Plus 7, Elise, Alphen, Tita, General, Le Guin, Vida, the list goes on. You've got plenty of people who care about you, me included. If you're worried about over something, it's a good sign. Take it as a reminder that you didn't abandon your emotions completely. And if you do have problems, come tell us about them. We'll do whatever we can to help. 
Instructorine. You really mean that? There's something I'd like to ask you to do. Will you, will, will you hold on to my good luck charms for me? Your good luck charms. Here, take a look. Oh, are those the bullets you? They are. I brought them with me from when I gave the order to crash the Pangrel into the airship. They're a reminder of how we made out before we could get caught up in the ship's destruction. And of how Operation Mill Mirage could have ended in the worst possible way, but didn't. I'd like you to have them, at least, while we're both part of Class 7. Alright, I'll be glad to keep a hold of them for you. I hope one day you know for sure you'll never need to use them again. I won't be returning them until then. Are you okay with that? Of course, that's fine with me. <laughs> huh? That's a bit much for a non-final bonding event. Musei, is that what you're after all this time? You shouldn't leave yourself so open to attack and structure. Think of this as payback for the other day, and two months ago during our field exercises as well. Those bullets would have saved me a great deal of pain. It's only fair I get a bit of pleasure in return, no? With this, no matter what happens with Mule Mirage, I know I'll be able to keep myself together. Musei, you're asking a lot, but I'll overlook it this once. Just don't get used to it, alright? You and I are still teacher and student. Whatever you say, I won't tell anyone you if you don't. And sharing a secret makes things all the more exciting, wouldn't you say? She's got me there, I guess. I'll just have to go along with it. After a while longer, Re and Musei packed up and returned to Courageous 2. Come to think of it, since there are two bullets, I'd say oh, you owe me a second kiss. Don't push your luck. It's only thanks to all of you that I didn't lose what makes me human. How remarkable it is that my bonds with everyone conceal a possibility I couldn't see on the board. I can't thank you all enough for teaching me that. I'm just happy to hear you say it. But, hmm, a special secret just between you and uh, me and you, instructor. I know there are only words, but it makes my heart flutter. Secrets are meant to be just that, secret. Make sure you keep it to yourself. Yeah, that sounds good, thanks. I'll see you later, Governor Regnitz. Huh? Oh, Reen, looks like you've caught me at a pretty awkward time. But there's nothing going on between Machius' dad and me, though he does have that cool and gruff thing going on. I didn't even consider that, but good to know, I guess. Are you heading off somewhere, then? Yeah, I'm, I'm headed off to a certain grave. Hopefully it works out this time. Is she talking about... Why don't we go together? Hey, of course not, Reen. We're off to orders, okay? After Reen and Sarah receive a certain something from Governor Regnus and Ordus, they head to the same spot in Languedoc Canyon they visited last time. Here to clear out the Pleroma grass for real. This is a flag from the naval fortress, right? I'll make a thing tribute for Colonel Valestine. Good thing Governor Regnus kept it aside for us. There may be black pleroma grass here, but apparently it's not interfering with the spirit veins. That's good to know. You want help, Reen? Sure. Oh. The Cleansing Flame. It looks like you found your way forward. We got to put some old ghosts to rest, too. Thank you for that. Be careful out there. I hate for you to die before things get start getting interesting. Same to you guys. Next time we meet, we'll probably be as enemies, though. It's 
Sarah, about what happened before. You know what? I figure I was just hearing things. Or maybe my dad really did drop in to see how his beloved daughter is doing these days. If he did, he'll know I'm into a totally different kind of guy now. Huh? Come on, for real? You really are hopelessly dense sometimes, you know that. Unless someone else snatches you up soon, I won't count myself out of the running just yet. Mom Sarah's strength being sure a special moment with Sarah. Wait, where'd she go? Sloan Conference Room. Making another transmission, Instructor? Yeah, I just said I'll report to Governor Regnitz, along with my links. You know, I really appreciate you coming with me to visit my dad's grave, Reen. No need to read no need to link. I've hardly done anything at all. Hey still, it really does mean a lot. I have to say, this is a nice way to end things, both for me and for everyone up north. If there's anything I can do to help, you guys have my undivided attention. Thanks, Instructor. I know that we can always depend on you. So, I remember some talk about preparing for the worst earlier. I guess that doesn't really matter, though. I'll just top the man up and face whatever lies in front of me. Thanks for tuning in to this Let's Play of The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 4. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, and or hit the bell icon.